Hello everyone. Welcome back to Pocket Tutorials. This is tutorial number two where I'm going to continue showing you how to program using Ruby. Now last tutorial we covered using variables and this tutorial we're going to cover some basic constructs that we use in programming such as if statements which is how we can make decisions on on the flow of the program as well as some loops now let's get started we've just created three variables here var is set to 5, x is set to 10 and y is set to 20 now we can show you how to do a comparison so simply x is greater than y evaluates to false the other way is x is less than y evaluates of course to true you could also write this as like 5 is less than 10 but um, generally we're working with variables so it's good we want to sort of capture that that information and and name it how we want to so let's uh, give another example let's say my name is Lucas and then wanted is John now we can do a, what's called a string comparison using the equals equals um, and of course it's going to evaluate to false because Lucas is not the same string as John however we can also check it this way and of course Lucas as in the value of the variable name is of course the same as Lucas the string literal like we, we, we call this a string literal because it's written in place so what we've just done here is we, we've performed a comparison now I'll show you how to use the if statement So what we've just done here is we've 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 performed an if statement if then our um, comparison expression that is if the name is equal to Lucas we print hi there otherwise we print who are you so in this case the name the value of name is Lucas so it will just run the code in here if for example the name was John then this code here will be run so we can use if statements to control the flow of the program we can only run we can use it to only run particular sections of code if um, a certain condition is met so we can also have a, a much larger if statement for example we'll compare Lucas Uh, and if our name is uh, John, then we go. Gonna say something else. Otherwise, so what's happening here is we've got a. It's sort of like a extended if statement. So if this condition is true, then run this. Otherwise, if this condition is true, run this otherwise run this and then end that ends ends the uh, the whole construct so you can have pretty pretty um, useful if statements which which will um, last well they can cover any manner of expressions so let's uh, let's do a loop so you can go 10 dot times do put s high but um, in, gen in general programming, we do something like, so in Ruby, oh, so in Ruby, the way we do a loop, for example, is, so that will do it like that. That should be n, sorry. 
my bad. So the con the syntax is for i in let's say one dot dot five do put s i n. So what that does is it runs put s five times with the value i, and i is going from one dot dot as in one to five. So one two three four five. Now this is a little different from older programming languages. They have a much sort of verbose loop construct, but I find that loops in Ruby are very elegant. So for example, if we don't actually need to use the value of i, we could just go five dot times do put s i in. And that will just print i five times. So this is quite clever and I'm not going to explain the magic behind this at the moment because that will take far too long. However, we can also do a simple a simple loop, an infinite loop. So that's an infinite loop. The reason is because while true do blah 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 end while true is always going to be true so there's nothing stopping true there's nothing changing true to be false so this means it's an infinite loop and it's and it's one pitfall in programming that you can do that is you, your program can get into an infinite loop and by some error of logic you can't break out of it so let's actually break out of it while true do well, We'll break out of it after what we say is the first iteration. And then we just use the break command. So what that's doing is, even though this is an infinite loop, it's only running at once because we break before we get to loop again. So the break statement is very clever. You can, you can use it to break out of a loop. And generally what happens is, in a loop, you're, you're running a loop and then you test for a condition and then you might do something or you might break out of the loop. So I'm not going to give you a contrived example at the moment but the break statement can be used inside any sort of loop. And there's the other one is so in Ruby we have what's called um, it's like a do loop. We, we call it a do loop but in, in Ruby the syntax is slightly different so Hi. Um. Then end while true. So that's also an infinite loop. So begin just says we're beginning our block of code. Put s hi end while you know our conditions. So we could just do it false, and it's going to run it only once because what happens is when when you do a loop in this style it will always run it at least once and then it will run it again when the condition is true so for example we could have begin high end while one equals one so we also know clearly one is equal to one so that's gonna evaluate to true and it's always gonna run like that now what else can we show you arrays so in in ruby when many lang in fact every language almost every language has an ability to store like a group of things together and perhaps the simplest simplest group of things is what's called an array so let's create an array and four so you've got an array here where it's got uh, four elements and the elements are simply just a number one, two, three, and four. So how do we access these elements? Well, accessing these elements is very simple. You just go like that. You just use array and then square bracket, then the index of the element. So one thing to keep in mind is that arrays are indexed at zero. That means the last element in this array is actually so the last index in this array is 3 
and the first index is 0. So 1, 2, 3. What happens when we do 4? So in Ruby it's quite quite forgiving if you try and access the array outside of what elements you have sorry um, it will just return nil now some other languages will not let you do that but Ruby is quite forgiving so what's what's in a way what's a way to um, walk through this array one way one way I should say is you can use each so I'm now going to use um, a kind of clever piece of Ruby syntax which loops through the array and then it sets it sets a variable item for each item in the array so use the array variable dot each do then this is the name of the local variable that we're using so the first time it runs it will be one then two then three then four then we're simply just printing it out put s item one two three four so that's pretty cool now many languages don't have this feature but I, I think it's a fantastic feature and and it, it it's closer to how we think like you you thinking okay I've got these objects and I want to do something with each one so you use dot each so this is really qu quite quite cool in, in, in a very geeky way. So now I'm going to show you an array of strings. So let's call our array words. So the first one's hello. I'm putting a space. In fact, no, hello. My name is Lucas. So we've just created an array of uh, five words. Now let's say you wanted to turn this into a kind of sentence so what we can use is we can use the join function and the argument we're passing into it is a space Ta-da! it's just joined every string element in the array with a space you can also do that to with an array of any type so for example oh, sorry I'll make that nicer for you so we can also work with our previous array, the one, two, three, four array, array, and we've just joined them with the string, which is basically a comma and a space. So we often use join when we want to kind of print out an array um, in a nice particular way or in a particular format. So this is pretty cool. So what we've got is we've got an array of strings. So that's words and we have taken let's create a new a new um, variable called sentence words dot join with a space so what I've used here is I've used some brackets here to do um, to specify the 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 parameter to the join function you don't actually have to use them in Ruby but sometimes for things like join it's nice because it's a bit easier to read especially when there's like lots of stuff but you can do it that way without brackets or you can do it with brackets so we've just got our sentence and then we can just print our sentence out and it says hello my name is Lucas so let's um in finishing let's uh add an item to the array so in Ruby there's a, there's a pretty cool way of doing it what we can do is we can say input say is get s okay let's say my input is like we'll add a full stop okay so it's just added that and then we chomp it input dot chomp now finally we have our words and then we put input into words so this is this is a, a fancy little piece of syntactic sugar is what how we refer to it and it basically puts input into words now watch this see it's just added the full stop which was our input to the words 